Good morning and welcome to Morning Java, brought to you as always by our friends at the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where my daughter Dada and I just went on a quick shopping run with the masks on and everything. Didn't take advantage of the curbside delivery, Alex. I know you and I have both done that in the recent past. I mean, it's there for a reason, if you want it. Yeah, everybody's just, it's such a nice day. Everybody's just getting outside and going inside, doing the math and all the safe stuff and everything. Uh, let's talk baseball. See the face I have to make to say that to get the B out? Yay. Yeah, um, because we can't talk baseball because all there is is just the, the back and forth between the owners and the players. And the thing, one, a couple of the things that really stand out for me in this process here at the risk of overgeneralizing here is that to correct myself, there really hasn't been back and forth, has there? There hasn't been actual dialogue. I mean, not really. It was more, there was ne it never seemed like there was a point whenever they were just in a room. Okay, we're going to spend all day here. We're going to work out some things. It, or a it Zoom never room felt like we got you're worried there. about the virus. It can be a Zoom room. Okay. There, yeah, that, that was a metaphor. Yeah, it, it was more, no, no. here's a counter proposal. Well, that's garbage. I'll send you a counter proposal. Well, I don't like that either. Yeah, there hasn't been, there hasn't been, like, if you go back to the original March agreement, the one that everybody now debates, actually, amusingly enough, on both sides, take issue with the March agreement that both of them signed, which is hilarious. But if you if you go back to that, it was right in the, the height of the, of the pandemic fears and everything that was going on in New York and all the people dying and everything else. And it was signed so quickly, so quietly that you know that there had to have been some humans involved. Do you know what I mean? Just saying, hey, listen, we got to take care of this. We can't be the bad guys here. We, and they did, and they got it done really quickly. And after that, it feels like all the lawyers come rushing in. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that None March deal was there, was, there was like 101 out of 100 motivation to get that deal done by the start of the regular season, what it was supposed to be. That's Both why sides. that deal got done. Yeah. There, there hasn't been that motivation for this. There just hasn't. No. And, and part of the reason for that is, I, and again, I, I know this is going to sound wishy-washy looking at both sides, but I see, I see flaws in, 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 in everything that's happening on either side. I really do. And I, I see, for example, looking ahead to 2021 and everybody's trying to set a stage for that i mean they, they there's no way they could deny it with some of the language that's going back and forth here it's not an ordinary setting uh jameson tyone i thought to his credit uh, when he came back at me on twitter took exception with something that i put on there pointed out that this isn't the year for cba talks that's next yeah. year and he's right um uh, he wasn't right about everything that he, he came back to me for. For anybody who doesn't know, I, I, I basically didn't appreciate the fact that he was bringing fans into this as if they're behind the players. In Pittsburgh, fans are thinking about other things, believe me, than the players' welfare. Um, but I, I, I think a lot of that's been mixed in, the 2021 aspect of it. And I, I think you also just have just a truckload of egos on both sides. And I hate to keep bringing lawyers and I have respect for lawyers as a profession here. I imagine all that are watching this going right now. Hey, wow. What's up with lawyers here? What's wrong with lawyers? Uh, it's, it's not, it's the, as soon as they get in there, it becomes a different discussion. It becomes a different dialogue. It's just about winning now. I mean, that's, how much has baseball changed over the last 20 years from an ownership standpoint? For generations in baseball, you owned a team either for the legacy, the prestige of you own a major league baseball team, or as a tax shelter out of the two. Now it's a legitimate investment. That's why we've seen teams quadruple, quintuple how much they're actually worth. And that's a big, big reason for why there's this fight right now, because baseball has become a business. It was always a business, but now it is really a business where you can own a minority stake and it's like an actual investment instead of just, hey, I own a little chunk of the Pittsburgh Pirates. No, no, no. There's no question about that. We saw the recent sale of the Kansas City Royals, who obviously aren't one of the bigger or wealthier no, franchises God, in no. baseball, uh, still ended up bringing in David Glass a billion dollars uh, off of a contract. And how much did he buy that team for? Like I was going to say yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's, it's pretty much what the, the Nutting family originally 
uh, put into the Pirates whenever they got involved with Kevin McClatchy back in the Three River Stadium days. Um, the, the, the growth in values has been exponential. Um, the counter from the owner's side, and, and I, like I said all along here, I, I, I hear both sides, but I also criticize both sides. On the owner's side is that what, what you're looking at right now isn't uh, an increase in value proposition. It's plain and simple. It's just cash flow. There's nobody in the seats. There's no sponsorships. Uh, there's not a player in baseball who would deny that revenues are going to be way down for however many oh, games they play. You know what I mean? Oh, I, there's no denying it. And you know what? There really is no scenario where you can see owners not being in the red for this year. No. But here's the deal. For a couple extra weeks worth of games, they yeah, could have gotten silly. those expanded playoffs. Yeah. And we just saw what they got from TBS. That is hundreds of millions of dollars they are leaving on the table. That is in such the future. unbelievable in, in, in the... short-sightedness. Uh, you're <laughs> right about the TBS deal, but the TBS deal is two years down I, I know, the road. that's two it's years from now. now. Okay. Okay, that's two years from now. And, yeah, maybe they could put it in the next CBA. But what if it's not in the next CBA? That is a ton of money that's not going to come into the league because you they don't want to pay for two extra weeks of games. Right. You know, what's, you know what's one way to make sure that the players get a cut of all that money? <sighs> Come on. You can uh, yeah, say yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know salary it. cap. Yes, yeah, Because it cap. works. Because it works. Every time the NFL or the NHL or the NBA signs some other mega deal contract, the players and the union light candles because that's half, half of that's going straight into their pockets. It's a beautiful system. It works for everybody. It doesn't exist in baseball, and therefore baseball doesn't work. Baseball's sitting here badly broken, now exposed to the whole world as such. Every team that drafts a player in the first round somehow finds a way, some cases just blurt it out, we had that player higher on our board than what we took him. Ben Charrington acknowledged publicly that they had Nick Gonzalez the dynamic hitting infielder from New Mexico State, higher on the board than seventh overall. Good for him, good for them. Now, also since then, there's been stuff in the scouting circles that the Pirates really had fixated on Nick Gonzalez going back months. Uh, that's a different story, Alex, if that's accurate. you know. And again, you never can really know the truth on these things. It's just going to be things that get chirped yeah. among scouts or whatever. But if they were on him and they saw something going back that far and there was no baseball in the interim or very little baseball in the interim, that tells me a lot about how strongly they felt about this, this trajectory that he had been on going into this college season. I mean, what he did in Cape Cod, he was, he was going yeah. like that for a lot of people, which mm -hmm. I, you can't stress enough. It just completely threw away any any you know, knock that you could have on the guy. Oh, he plays with a metal bat. It's high altitude. He doesn't face good pitching. Well, well all those things were true. All, 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 all those things were true, though. I think he needed yeah. Cape Cod. Oh, he absolutely needed Cape Cod. Without Cape Cod, he's a third-round draft pick at best. And, right, but, with, his, with his size and the fact that he's a middle infielder mm -hmm. who can't play shortstop. Uh, yeah, I think he needed to prove that he was above and beyond as a hitter. Two things did interest me, though. Uh, and this is more just a Cape Cod ism and jones since the pirates obviously put a lot of stock there which makes sense there wasn't much of a college season uh that scouting happened under the previous you know gm because you know it was last summer that doesn't mean that you know charrington and uh sanders didn't keep close tabs on what was going on there also and you know just they just merged what they had but mm -hmm. I, I found that kind of interesting well it is um, it is I, I i agree if i can chime in on that before your second point i, I think we heard Directly from Ben Charrington, uh, when he was hired, I had some discussions with him away from uh, the formal settings on this subject as well, that he, he wasn't going to just take all of Huntington's people and just throw them out. And, and that's, no. that's the sign of a smart, that's... confident manager. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I think he kept a few too many. Um, I, I'll say that. Uh, you know, a, a couple in particular that I can't believe they kept. Uh, one of them rhymes with Larry Broadway, but if you look that's a at lazy the, rhyme. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but if you look at if you look at the scouts, 
um, they've had scouts can ease very easily show records that, Hey, this was the guy that I wanted. This was the guy that I advocated. Do you know what I'm saying? During a draft yeah. process, maybe the scouting director, maybe the general manager, maybe the, the dark overlord of the whole process, meaning Kyle Stark would just overrule everybody and say, no, we're going to take this guy because I think he can carry logs on the beach better than the other ones. This is, this is a, a GM who came in with some confidence and, and I think was right to trust some of the people and give them a chance. Which ties into the second thing I wanted to bring up. In that press release, he cited the scout who had been following him for so long. And that just seemed different. That sounded like well, look, Huntington this, did, this yeah, was Huntington team didn't. effort. Huntington didn't believe in it. Um, I, I used to ask Huntington, I can tell you this now, after they would get like a great find, like, uh, you know, a Jason Grilly or someone like that. Grilly was obviously in the minor leagues at that point. So I'm not talking about the amateurs, but it, uh, John, when John Holtzcomb, I mean, the ultimate find, Out of finding nowhere. someone yeah. in a frontier league or whatever it was. It wasn't the frontier league, but it was something like that with the Washington Wild Things play, one of those independent leagues. Uh, and because it was some uh, significantly older scout, his name's slipping my mind right now, but Huntington made a rare exception and gave the scouts a name. But yeah, Charrington went out of his way. Uh, I like that. I like yeah. giving credit where it's due. Now, at the same time, if a guy is, turns into a total bust, you're not going to put out a that guy. Release he he was the one who wanted Nick <laughs> Gonzalez. He banged the tables for that Gonzalez guy. Wasn't us. Wasn't us. <laughs> One of the things that's already getting thrown into this back and forth between the owners and the players is, is the season going to be too short where it's going to lack validity or whatever. Um, what's your thoughts? Uh, if it is 48, 50 games, that's not enough. I checked this National League standings on May 24th. And uh, even if you would have taken that, you know, seven – team playoff structure that Major League Baseball is throwing around. Uh, the Washington Nationals still had the second worst record in the National League. And the other team that won in the NLCS, the Cardinals, wouldn't have made the playoffs in that seven-game format. Those were the two best teams in the National League last year. You can't base it off 50 games. If someone gets hurt, tweaks a hamstring, and you know needs to go in the 10-day IL, well, that's 20% of his season. Gone. Flushed. Pitcher gets a hangnail. That's 20% of the season. It's, it's just too small a sample to well, take seriously. What, what will you, you, so you won't take it seriously if it's 50 games? I mean, I, I have to take it seriously, but whenever okay. you look back. Or how about this? Just as throwing it out there. Cody Bellinger last year threw 48 games for the Dodgers. Dodgers 48th game had a 405 batting average. Ted Williams, baby. The batting total. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm going to be. We're going to look back it. at baseball history. It wasn't until Cody Bellinger did it over 48 games. Never, Sorry, mind, Teddy. It, never mind Josh Bell having hit 5,000 home runs through, exactly. through May of last yeah. year, right? Yeah. Yes. I'll say that uh, my thoughts on this are uh, I'm going to echo Mike Tomlin on this. When somebody asks him about the Steelers schedule, he just says, they hand us a schedule. We play it. We go wherever they tell us to go. Um, that's it. Uh, the length of the schedule, the caliber of the opponent, how long a certain road trip is, how long a homestand is, or whatever else. Uh, ultimately, it's out of your control. Uh, you're told to play X number of games. Uh, in most cases, obviously, it's 162. Maybe Alex, the Washington Nationals, would have taken the first couple of months a little bit more seriously commensurate to their talent level last year. And if they hadn't, ah. and they knew, and they knew, and they knew that the season was going to end at a certain point, then they just failed. That's it. They didn't make it. Oh, well, somebody else did. Uh, I'd, I'd, we, I, I'd, shed no tears for the hypothetical nationals in the hypothetical 2019 season. Uh, I, I, it would be weird, a really short season like this, but I would also say that you would have a lot fewer games where the manager is likely to, uh, well, there's, there'll be a DH this year, so this might not be the best example, but where a manager is likely to say, you know what, we're just going to leave that pitcher out there to take his bullets 
all night long and give up 10 runs and we're not going to bat for him or whatever. I think you'll see games managed differently. I think you might see rotations approached differently. You might see bullpens handled differently. Uh, you're not going to see the bench get involved as much if you know that there are only 50 games. It's going to be our best against your best. That's unfair to teams that are deeper. It really evens the playing field, of course, for teams Even, like the Pirates that aren't yeah. deep and were, who were destroyed by a lack of depth last year. I, I like it. I think it's great. Go for it. You know, but, what's but, your alternative here? What's your alternative? I, I, no there is no alternative. No. I get the, the, the alternative is there is no season. I, mean, I guess something's better than nothing. But whenever you look back on it, what are the odds that the actual best team in baseball – is going to go to the World Series. It doesn't matter. It's the, it's the, it it's does the matter. Schedule. No, it's the schedule that Mike Tomlin was handed. He's just playing the schedule that he's handed. If he opens in Foxborough on a Monday night, he opens in Foxborough on a Monday night, baseball's going to have the same circumstance. I really, I, I really think the teams and managers and the coaching staffs and the players themselves will adjust. I think there's a possibility for seeing great baseball actually – in a tight schedule like that where everything kind of feels like, you know, August and September and a pennant race and you have a chance to get people invigorated. Don't forget, you, you got to bring fans back into this. People are mad. 48 games aren't bringing fans back. Let's be 48, real. 48 uh, is weird, but at the same time, if it's what, you know, realistically it wouldn't be that. I, I, I've thought all along, and if, if you saw Trevor Bauer's tweets, that it's probably going to end up being, you know, 55, 60, whatever. And realistically, you know, I think you suggested yourself something like this earlier in this program. When you're talking about the difference between 48 and 58 and 62 and whatever, it's another week and a half of ball. Uh, I'd like to see more games too. I wish they would settle, you know, five minutes from now, but I don't think we're going to see it. Uh, I think, I think it's going to be a shorter schedule and it's going to be under the pall of a grievance and all this other crap. It's just baseball. <laughs>